Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. We start off this week's news about the big glowy orb in the sky, as ice has been detected on the lunar surface, being found on both the north and south poles. Temperatures on the moon's surface can rise up to 100 degrees C, but some parts of the moon near the poles are always in darkness, as the moon is at a small tilt. New discoveries about the moon are always nice, as it pushes forward the idea of more expeditions there, or perhaps even a permanent or semi-permanent moon base. And flying back into the past now, a 99 million year old beetle has been found in Burma encased in amber. This gave proof of the relationships between cycads and insects, giving more evidence for them being the first insect pollinated plants. The beetle found shows special adaptations that help it pollinate cycads and take its pollen, such as mandibular patches. Just to put the cherry on the cake, actual cycad pollen grains were found in the beetle's mandibles. And looking to the skies again, an aurora that was classified as a new type of aurora back in 2016 when it was discovered has now been declassified and is not an aurora at all. Steve, as it has been named, seems to come from a completely different atmospheric process than a normal aurora, which is caused by highly charged particles darting around Earth. In other news, researchers concluded that the type of hands used to make 500,000 year old stone tools must have had similar gripping capabilities to modern humans. It used a technique called platform preparation, which is essential for making more advanced stone tools. This process means laying down a piece of stone on a platform and chipping bits of that stone to create a predetermined shape like a spearhead. Right, so some fairly controversial stuff this week if you've been following the Spinosaurus saga that took off back in 2014. As you'll likely know, it has been proposed for quite a while that this dinosaur had a semi-aquatic lifestyle, and in the 2014 paper, the idea that Spinosaurus was a proficient swimmer and maybe could even have dived underwater to catch prey was put forward. Indeed, the aquatic abilities of this animal were further supported in a study we recently covered here, describing numerous cranial features that indicate such a way of living. So it may seem slightly surprising that a new study published this week is being reported as saying Spinosaurus was a terrestrial creature not adapted for swimming. By creating computer simulations, a paleontologist at the Royal Tyrell showed that Spinosaurus couldn't dive underwater, and that it was at a risk of tipping over due to its top heavy body. The study also found the animal's centre of mass to be near its hind legs, instead of closer to the middle of the body, meaning that it could have quite easily walked on its hind legs, instead of on all fours as it has been suggested in the past. However, there are still many lines of evidence that reveal this dinosaur's ties to water, so it could be that it was more of a bear-like animal wading into the shallows to catch prehistoric fish, but not actually swimming and diving. However, the lead author of the 2014 paper warns that there can still be issues with computer modelling, especially if it's not actually based on the fossils. New fossils will be important in revealing more details of Spinosaurus lifestyle, and apparently there is some new material being formally described at the moment. Anyway, I think that's our longest article yet. Thank you very much for watching this episode of 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on Sunday.